If you've been on the internet for more than three minutes during the past few months, chances are you've heard about Sonic Boom and its less than generous feedback. It's rapidly achieved god-tier status of scrutiny in the short time that it's been on the market. Panned across the board by critics for its monotonous combat and level design, bland visual style, atrocious story and writing, and enormous array of glitches. The Wii U version in particular actually received lower review scores than Sonic 2006, which itself is considered one of the worst games of all time. Fans also did not take kindly to the game, with its sales numbers tanking in comparison to its brethren. There are very few people who are willing to defend this game, and it's quickly becoming apparent that the Sonic franchise as a whole is struggling. Don't get me wrong, I love this franchise, but it's definitely in danger. Again, look at the sales numbers. While they tend to fluctuate from game to game, major Sonic titles consistently meet at least 1 million copies sold. However, Sonic Lost World has only sold around 700,000, and Sonic Boom hasn't even cleared half a million so far, and that's including both the 3DS and Wii U versions. And while, yes, those are still good numbers, it's clear that consumer interest in Sonic games is dying down. But why? Why are new Sonic games not living up to the levels set by their predecessors? And more importantly, what can Sonic Team do to reverse it? Hopefully I'll be able to answer those questions in this video, or at the very least get the ball rolling. Now before we get into this, I want to say that I'm not coming at this from a game design point of view. For one thing, I would hardly be a credible source for advice on that front, having no experience with the actual process of game design. Plus, even if I did have such experience, it would be pretty boring. I'm coming at this from a more conceptual angle. I'm more trying to steer Sonic in the right direction than to plot out an exact course of action, as, again, I leave that up to professionals. Now, to get a clear vision for Sonic's future, we first need to take a look at the franchise's current history so we can see what they've done, what they should continue to do, and what they need to stop doing. Here's a funny little story. At around the same time that Sonic Boom was released, I picked up and played Sonic Adventure for the first time. Yeah, I know I'm late to the party on that one, but that's not important right now. What is important is how Sonic's first big 3D hit stacks up to his most recent endeavor, because, in all honesty, they're more similar than you'd think. Despite one having a significantly different reception than the other, the two share some similar problems. They both have a lot of glitches that pop up during the gameplay. They both have linear segments with no player input whatsoever. They both have poor writing and voice acting. They both suffer from frame rate and camera issues. Why then is Sonic Adventure so beloved and Sonic Boom so hated? Well, to put it simply, our expectations have evolved. Sonic Adventure was the franchise's first successful 3D platformer. It came out at a time when the formula of the genre was still being constructed and experimented with. As a result, people were able to look past the game's flaws because they were just typical things for games in that era to have. Not only that, but due to it being the first of its kind in the series, the game was a gateway for potential. Stuff like the stiff camera and glitches weren't so bothersome at the time because people recognized it as a first attempt and expected those issues would be fixed in future installments of the franchise. They were able to ignore or at least tolerate the problems and focus on the positives that this game and future sequels could possibly contain. Fifteen years and eleven 3D installments later, that ship has long since sailed. Thanks to improvement of technology and the refinement of the genre, games just can't get away with stuff like this anymore. It's the same reason why NES hard games are so sparse nowadays. We've developed the craft to the point where we can make games challenging without resorting to cheap tactics that earlier games had no choice but to employ. Yeah, if a game like the original Double Dragon or Battletoads were released today, they would likely have a very negative reception. And I think the same goes with something like Sonic Adventure. I'm not saying it's a bad game, just that it shows its age. And in case you're wondering, this isn't just something that happens over a period of decades, either. Like I mentioned before, Sonic 2006 had better ratings and sales than Sonic Boom, despite the former being a candidate for one of the worst games ever made. Whether Sonic Boom is actually a worse game than Sonic 2006 is debatable, but the point remains that it took only eight years for players' expectations of the franchise to grow to that level, and that bar is only going to keep getting raised. Sonic Boom may be just one example, but it helped to shed a lot of light for me on just why the franchise has gotten such a bad rap in recent years. The problem with Sonic games is that they are not evolving with the industry around them. They're stagnant. Even good Sonic games are usually so because of their lineage and not because of their actual design. They're fun, they're action-packed, but they're not masterful, they're not expertly crafted. They're good for a Sonic game. I'm not happy about it, as I do still enjoy most of the modern titles, but it's a truth that I find difficult to argue against. As for solving this problem, that'll also be difficult. 
The Sonic franchise has slipped so far behind the curve that it'll take a lot of effort to bring them back up to speed, no pun intended. I personally don't know the details of how this could be accomplished, but the best thing I can think of is for it to take a bit of a Mirror's Edge approach. Here let me explain. A lot of modern Sonic levels consist of straight paths with the occasional enemy or obstacle. While that works well with the franchise's familiar speed, it's a pretty barren design. There's not a lot of interactivity with the levels, which is one reason why many people don't like the modern titles. Sonic Colors, I love you, but cinematics can only hide so much! But what I envision for future Sonic games is for the environment to actively affect the gameplay. Rather than pushing Sonic along the single path, give the player more options. Present them with a goal and then let them figure out how to reach it. And different methods would yield different challenges, like more numerous or stronger enemies, trickier platforming, maybe a mini-boss or two, even shortcuts and power-ups. Maybe even have a trick counter that actually has purpose, like higher scores unlocking new levels or other bonus content. I think this sort of design could not only increase the game's replay value, but also give players a feeling of real investment in the game, less trip to the zoo and more safari, if you will. Yeah, you're gonna see some cool stuff either way, but it's the difference of something being shown to you versus you seeking it out. It just feels like the next step, you know? While we're here, there is another topic that I feel the need to address, and that's the game's stories. Now, I understand that there's a certain mentality that story is unimportant when talking about a game like Sonic, but for the purposes of building the franchise back up, this needs to be fixed. The stories of most modern Sonic games barely function as such. They're a placeholder at best, and an atrocity at worst. All that usually happens is that a new villain is introduced, and Sonic stops him. That's it. I realize that that's the kind of story structure the franchise was created with, but it's gotten to the point now where the reuse of that structure is getting really dated and really distracting. There is no creativity put into them at all, and for me at least, it really turned me off to the more recent titles. Saying that it's a Sonic game shouldn't be an excuse for it to be mediocre. And I know they can do better. I'm not saying it has to be prototype levels of complicated or anything, but we're ready for a Sonic game that takes itself somewhat seriously. That's a large reason why Sonic Adventure 2 is so beloved. However, I must also say that there has to be a limit to it. I mean, Shadow the Hedgehog took itself seriously, and yet it was shunned by a large faction of the fanbase. So what's the difference between Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic Adventure 2? Well, the two simply have a different approach to the idea. One succeeded, while the other did not. Shadow approaches the idea by using a serious style. Ooh, they swear. Ooh, they have guns. Ooh, there's motorcycles and tragic backstory and heavy metal and red and black. Very far from what Sonic fans had come to expect at that time. That's not to say that this kind of style can't work. Games like Twisted Metal pulled it off. However, the game tried so hard to be edgy that, for many fans, it actually backfired. Sonic Adventure 2, on the other hand, was more serious in its tone. The settings, characters, and such were kept familiar, yet they were thrust into a plot that became more interesting as the game went on. You start off just as normal old Sonic running from the cops, but that quickly changes as you meet new characters. You discover more about all the characters as they form new relationships with one another. And all the while, the stakes of the situation at hand keep getting raised, forcing them to adapt their relationships. Also, the game itself wasn't afraid to tackle an emotion or two. This all made the eventual Saving the World plot feel much more meaningful in the end. You'd seen these characters change on their adventure and use their newfound friendships and abilities to win the battle. That is treating your story with respect. Newer titles, on the other hand, boil down to, There's a bad guy! He's going to destroy the world because he's a bad guy! You better go stop that bad guy! Oh, he was a bad guy, wasn't he? For the Genesis, it was passable. For the new generation, it's lazy. Not only that, but most of the really new Sonic titles basically just keep the focus on Sonic himself. Even when other characters take the spotlight, it's usually just them interacting with Sonic. While not inherently bad, keeping the focus of a story on a single character has the tendency to get stale, especially over multiple installments. Sonic's a decent enough character to carry a couple of games, but at this point there's very little new that can be done with him other than presenting him with a new villain who is completely forgotten about by the next game. He's the kind of character that needs support, and quite a bit of it. The adventure games gave him that support, and are still widely considered among the best of his 3D titles. Most of the newer releases do not. Yeah, I know, beauty and simplicity or whatever. 
And while I agree that a game doesn't need a fantastic story in order to be a good game, this franchise in particular needs something great to pull it out of its downward slump. Because consumer interest has died down so quickly, we need a reason to care about what happens in the next game other than, it's Sonic. <sighs> Look, I know I've been kinda harsh on the Sonic franchise throughout this video. I still enjoy the games, and I know a lot of you all do too. But when you really get down to the nitty gritty, this is a flawed franchise that's going to take a lot of care and effort to bring back up again. I'm only trying to help, and sometimes that requires a full understanding of the problem. But hey, look on the bright side. While we've all been here talking about the Sonic video games, there are two other entertainment media in which Sonic has been doing much better, and they could actually provide guidance for future video games. I'm of course referring to the cartoons and the comics. While I don't have a ton of personal experience with these, from what little I've seen and what lot I've heard, these two have been keeping up extraordinarily well despite the decline seen in the video games. And from what I've gathered, it's pretty much for all the same reasons I just listed. The stories are still usually about stopping Dr. Robotnik, but take their time to actually give you reasons to care. Sonic is still usually present, but he's surrounded by plenty of other characters to work off of him. In fact, in the Sonic Universe comic, Sonic hardly ever shows up at all, and the focus shifts between several of the other characters. Speaking of which, both of these series do a great job of developing both their borrowed and their original characters. There's no doubt that these are Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and so forth, yet they all have personality beyond their usual one-dimensional selves. Like Sonic, for example, who is usually stuck in the cootie phase, actually goes through a lot of emotional drama with various females throughout these media. And Tails, who's usually pretty soft-spoken and generally optimistic, has his moments of explosion. They did the same thing to side characters, giving them a lot more focus and personality. Heck, they even made Big the Cat funny in Sonic X. How do you even do that? Finally, they created original characters that have become just as beloved by the community as the more recognizable ones, a few of many notable examples being Sally Acorn, Antoine, and Cosmo. So on the character front, they really got it nailed down. I'm not saying that they should make a game retelling Sonic Sat AM or anything, but clearly this can be a great source of inspiration. Also, these series have a good grasp of how to take themselves seriously. They can still make jokes and be silly when they want to, but they have just enough complexity and just enough intensity to keep you invested throughout the adventure. I'm only a few episodes into Sonic X and Sonic Sat AM, and yet I'm already excited to see where they're gonna go. Even the Sonic Boom show, which you'd expect would bomb given how well the game went over, is actually pretty fun for what it is. It probably won't become a classic, but there's at least a few jokes in there that are bound to tickle you. I'm not Eggman, I'm Sonic! He's pretending to be Sonic again. Well, I'm not gonna be Amy this time! Oh my god, I just got a mental picture! <laughs> So if you're starting to feel bored by the Sonic video games, or weren't a fan of them to begin with, I would still highly recommend giving these shows and comics a try. They're great for a lot of the same reasons that the games are failing. And even putting that aside, there's some pretty good stuff in it even for those who aren't that familiar with the franchise. But that's just my opinion. So now I'll turn it over to you guys. What do you want to see in Sonic's future? What sort of ideas do you have that could help aid this franchise? Is the franchise even able to be saved? I look forward to your response. I'll see you in the next video, and in the meantime, take care of yourselves.